We have made it back to Monday, ladies and gentlemen. Monday, getting that work week started off for you correctly on the hottest show on the streets, the number one form for your Crimson Tide football news. That being in my own words, with yours truly, the hype man for all things Bama conversation, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, bringing you the show from the magic city of Birmingham. Streaming this to you on YouTube. Speaking of the channel, if you haven't done so, go ahead right now, drop a like on the show, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn all of those notifications on. Be sure to hit that bell so that way you can get all the news, notes, entertainment, excitement, all things encompassing your Crimson Tide. We also got you covered on Facebook and Twitter as well. All forms of social media streaming to you the show. Got to shout out my man John Ivor in the building. Handling his thing there in the production studio. We got quite the amount of things to talk about on today. I mean, first and foremost, could we have the fastest group of linebackers in, of the Nick Saban era? This is something that one... Uh, Dr. Matt Ray is working on right now, getting the guys in that massive speed training this offseason. So we'll dive into that. We'll have our own Justin Smith, the scouting and recruiting analyst, coming on here to talk about a number of different things on the recruiting circuit. On the recruiting circuit. And then last but not least, you know, Will Anderson had a monster year last season as a freshman, despite all the things that went on where COVID was concerned, but he still put in a dynamic year on the field as a pass rusher. So, and see what he did, who's the next outside linebacker? Who's the next young edge rusher ready to pop and emerge for the Crimson Tides? We're gonna get into all of these things, plus more this evening, 205-448-1358. That is the number for you to call to let your voice be heard on the show, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you, the fans. Also, that daily Super Chat Go, $75 daily Super Chat Go. Appreciating the love, the passion, the support that you guys provide to us here on the show. But we, but we also get into something, a, a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a solemn, somber note here over the weekend. The University of Alabama and uh, Birmingham's ABC 3340 here lost a very wonderful man to what, what was reported as an apparent suicide, Mr. Christopher Sign, who passed away on Saturday morning of last week, 45 years of age, uh, Sign leaving behind his wife, Laura, and his three sons. He was an offensive lineman at Alabama from 1994 to 97. He played under Gene Stallings and Mike DuBose, was a part of three winning seasons in those four years. And upon his career you know, ending, uh, Coach Stallings actually helped sign, get on, in uh, Montgomery with the news team there and he started off covering politics and left Montgomery to pursue you know an, another news aspect in the state of Texas we covered the oil and gas industry there and he would come back to, uh, to he would come back to Alabama and, and would be a part of ABC 3340 as a reporter and as an anchor and it did just a great job. He covered the uh, surprise departure of Dennis Franchoni. He, co he, he covered the uh, Mike Price's short career at Alabama and then he also covered the April 2011 tornadoes that ripped through Tuscaloosa and surrounding areas. Won multiple awards for his work and then he went and spent 13 years at the ABC affiliate in Phoenix, Arizona, won four Emmys there, Emmy Awards there, and when he came back to Alabama in 2017, just a lot of high hope for him, his wife, and his family. And it's just very tragic and very unfortunate that, that this, this bright young man, you know, lost his life over the weekend. Mental health, people, is always a serious thing. So definitely, you know, take the mental health seriously. Protect your mental health. Defend your mental health. But definitely our thoughts and, and condolences and prayers are out to Miss Laura and the family of Christopher Sign. 
as he uh, passed away over the weekend at the age of 45 in his home uh, here in, in, the, in the Birmingham area in Hoover. But we now jump into you know, our first topic here of conversation for the evening. And uh, this is interesting because prior to uh, the relationship of uh, Nick Saban and Scott Cochran parting, parting ways there, Scott Cochran did good things for the university. He did good things, did great things for the program as the strength and conditioning coach, the director of strength and conditioning. Alabama won, you know, multiple, you know, many championships, national titles during Cochran's time here. He meant a lot to the program during his tenure. But it got to a point, you know, prior to the start of a 2020 season where, you know, Cochran's time had run its course. You had a lot of those soft tissue injuries that happened to the players on the field, and a lot of those injuries occurred to players of the same positional unit. If on top of that, there was the thing where, you know, Cochran's – Cochran's work ethic started to get stale. It started to get mundane. It started to get, you know, archaic. The, the information was starting to get out of date there where he was concerned. And, uh, you know, Saban wanted to get the real deal in strength and conditioning. He appreciated Cochran, but he wanted to get the real deal. So in March of 2020, he made the move of hiring David Ballou and Dr. Matt Ray, both from Indiana University. And a lot of people were kind of up in arms about it. They didn't quite know what to expect from these two. But ever since the hire was made, these two have become uh, the biggest rock stars in the Alabama football facility and the community just due to you know, last season, you didn't have a spring because of COVID. Your summer was really out of whack. You did not have a traditional fall camp. However, however, you would just hear little inklings of information from the, from the program about how, you know, both guys have these custom-made uh, workouts to fit every single player, how the players were so bought into to what they do and how they were just so in tune with the data, the analytics, the number, the scheme, this, this new wave of technology to have the players perform at tip-top peak you know, physical condition. And, and you didn't have those soft tissue injuries a season ago. Like players were healthier, they played, they were stronger, they were faster, they were put together. And even some of the small injuries that happened on the field, you couldn't blame Baloo and Ray for those. Those were kind of just kind of freak incidents there. But those players still played. Jalen Waddle still played. Man, the Dickerson still played. LeBron Ray still played. You know, those guys all took opportunities there on the field and helping this team win a national championship. And now both of these two, uh, and in particular Dr. Ray, both of these two have a full off season now. They've had a full spring to work with these guys, including an A-Day game. They're having a full summer right now, and they're going to have a full fall camp. So it's going to be really exciting to see what they do. But just pulling out Dr. Ray here for a minute, Speed is his thing. He is the speed doctor. He is the speed trainer. He works a lot with putting the uh, the, the wind-resistant belts on the players and having them run and, and increase the speed, increase the explosiveness, increase the timing, increase a lot of that dynamic there where the footwork is concerned. And uh, so far this summer, he has had all of the linebackers. He's had the entire linebacking room, linebacker room, inside – and outside guys working on being faster than ever before where the speed is concerned. As you're watching the video, you know, he's got all the linebackers doing this, whether it's uh, Christian Harris or it's Shane Lee or it's Jalen Moody or it's Henry Tooto, Will Anderson, Quandarius Robinson, uh, even you know, the young guys. He's got them all out there on the field the indoor facility, working on the speed training, working on the speed dynamics, trying to get the massive speed built up here where these players are concerned because U.S. fans are really excited about this defense. For the first time in about three to four years, there is a defense in Tuscaloosa to be really excited about, 
whether it's the defense, the front, the linebackers, the secondary, there has been no really worrisome questions about the defense. Now, of course, you know, the, the, the main thing is always, you know, Pete Golding, right? Can Pete get the calls right? Can Pete be confident in what he's doing out there as the defensive coordinator and as the play caller? So while that's still a concern, you want to see, you know, if Pete takes that next step, I think that he can, but he has to be able to take that next step. But, but aside from that, no one's really overly concerned, overly nervous, overly uh, worried there about the defense. But when you look at this group right here, and especially with Dr. Ray working with this group, from uh, and, and I've mentioned this on last week's show, all other schools are compared to Alabama. Other schools can have a great season, but – you, they get hit with, well, Alabama just won a national championship, so your great season has become insignificant, right? Other schools are compared to Alabama. Alabama is compared against itself. And um, from this point now to when Coach Saban decides to call it a career, every defensive player, every defense that comes through this program will get compared to the 2016 defense and I understand that may not be fair that might not be right they may not, that might not be the right thing to do but it's kind of who we are we like to compare we like to do you know different things like that to see you know how does this guy compare to a guy that we had in 2016 or how does this defense compare to the group that we had in 2016 and the reason why it's like that is the 2016 defense, primarily at the linebacker position, that was just a different group. That was just an incredible group right there. When you look at the speed and the relentless physicality of Reuben Foster, Sean Deion Hamilton, Rashawn Evans, Tim Williams, Ryan Anderson, and Christian Miller, the speed and relentless competitiveness of that group that led to that defense giving up just 13 points per game. Of the 54 sacks it had, which is the most of the Saban era, those linebackers accounted for 30 of the 54 sacks. They accounted for 68 of the 118 tackles for loss. It also helped force 24 turnovers. You look at 16 interceptions, you look at eight Fumble recoveries, return for touch for eight fumble recoveries, and of those 24 force interceptions, 11, 24 of those force turnovers, excuse me, 11 of those were returned for touchdowns, six pick sixes, and five fumble returns for scores there. And, and of all those linebackers I mentioned, all of those guys got drafted, but Reuben Foster and Rashawn Evans both win in the first round. And it was the uh, the physicality of that defense, the speed of that defense, the tenacity of that defense, especially at the linebacker position. People want to know, you know, this year's group right here, does it have, you know, the speed of that group, the fierceness of that group, the tenacity of that group? Because Coach Saban was very high on this defense Throughout the spring, he's been very high on this defense so far. As we get into the summer, he's just very excited and overjoyed about what this group can do. But if you look at Jess, particular, the linebacker room, Dr. Matt Ray is not playing around. He's got this graphic right now, and I know at times the graphics that he and Baloo put up, you know, we may not understand what they mean all the time, but he's got these speed graphics. He's got these different dynamics highlighting the top performance, the peak performance, the peak speed, the peak burst, the peak explosiveness, and he's saying, we got to get more juice. Send me more juice. Send me more juice. I mean, he's trying to get the these guys faster than the speed of light and sound. That's what Dr. Matt Ray is trying to do. And if you go back and you look at his track record, whether he was at IMG Academy down there in Florida or in Indiana, those players got faster and faster and faster and faster and faster every single season. My thing is, if he can get Shane Lee, if Dr. Ray can get Shane Lee running a 4-6-40, pay him more money. That's all I got to say. If Dr. Matt Ray can get Shane Lee running a 4 6 40, open up the pocketbook, pay Dr. Matt Ray even more money. That's my main thing. If he can get Shane Lee 4 6 40, I'm cool with that. But 
Question being, could this be the fastest group of linebackers of the Nick Saban era? There's a lot of them out there on that field. There's a lot of them out there that's going to play this season. And Dr. Matt Ray, not joking around, he's got these guys on the wind-resistant core, moving, running, sprinting, being explosive. Going to be fun to watch it, you know, this season. But we take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. Just getting started. Upon our return, we get to a dialogue with you, the Bama fans, right after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide, only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. We are back in, folks. Back in here to the action from the break on a Monday. Starting that work week off for you correctly. Number one form for Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Before we take your calls, you guys are already starting. Showing the love in the Super Chats. So, John Ivory, get the horn ready as we got Jimmy Cash Clay. Jimmy the Bad Man Clay with that $25 donation. And then, by, and then he also came back with another twenty-five dollars from Jimmy Cash Clay, that fifty-dollar donation, baddest donator in the game. And then we got New Jack in here with that eight eighty-eight in the super chats as well. Appreciating Jimmy Clay and New Jack starting us off here right on the show. As always, people, that daily super chat go seventy-five dollars. Daily Super Chat go there. Appreciate each and every last one of you. You guys, you make the show go right here. But back in here, folks, from the break here, we go to your phone. We go to the phone lines right now to take your calls. Call statement brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. And we open things up with my man, Waylon. Waylon, what's going on, brother? Well, <laughs> New Jack said somebody said something about a 16-team playoff, uh, 16, 12, 8. I think 8 would be the number. I I just don't think this 12 and 16 is going to work out. I know a lot of people want to call in and talk, and, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. It's not going to happen this year or next year. I think uh, 23, 24. Isn't the contract up in 2025? Am I counting right, Saban? Is, is, is that for Coach Saban? No, that's for our uh, to vote on to uh, increase the playoff, isn't it? Twenty twenty five. Is that right? 20, or is it? I think it's twenty twenty five. I will look at it, Waylon. But, but but I think you're right on twenty twenty five. And I also agree with you, Waylon. I know a lot of people have been talking about twelve team playoff, sixteen team playoff. But I think the magic number should be between six and eight. Now, at times, it's hard to get the best four in there if we're going to be honest with ourselves. But I think the cutoff number should be between six or eight. Yeah, it should be eight, but that ain't no doubt about it. 2017, we was up in the booth, and that was when Tim was still alive. I met Chris there. He, uh, he, uh, Chris signed me, rest in peace. I tell you what, uh, uh, we were at the LSU game, and uh, he popped in and hollered at Tim. I'd never met him, and I got to talk to him then. And uh, uh, he done helped James Spann do the weather there on the jumbo trons at halftime. So, uh, May Chris rest in peace. If anybody needs help, you need to call this 800-273-8255. This hotline for Chris, you know, these people, don't be ashamed to, uh, if somebody hadn't called you, hadn't heard from them, or, or you know, things are not right, go by and see them and, uh, you know, talk to them. And, and uh, uh, you know, reaching out for help is, 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 is something we got to do. We got to help one another. And maybe the next time this, you know, won't happen. So Chris was a great guy. 
great journalists like you, Stephen, loved Alabama football. And rest easy, Chris. We love you. Bye-bye. Uh, so I'll talk to you later. Steve, this is Team in Minnesota. How are you? How you feeling? I'm doing all right. Um, I wanted to get to your question about the uh, the, uh, the the defense. I I like I like what, I like what the defense is right now. I think the defense is going to have a big season. For Alabama, and I've mentioned this throughout the offseason so far. Going back to 2018, uh, you know, for the last three years, people have been really saying, you know, it's, it's, it's offense. Alabama's got to have the offense now. It's all about the offense. And I understand the game has evolved, and these offenses are scoring points at will and points in bunches. But I also feel like with all the offensive talk, the defense has felt kind of disrespected. And for the and for the first time. In a minute now, you've got all the big-time leaders and talent and marquee players on the defensive side of the football. you got leaders. you got young guys that are ready to get after the quarterback, make plays. We're seeing you know, Dr. Matt Ray getting the linebackers faster, having them out there doing those speed drills. My thing is this right here for, for Coach Pete Golding. He's in his, you know, fourth, fifth year, fourth year here, you know, with the program, third as the D.C., the confidence in his play calling, he's got to have it this year. Yeah. Um, I honestly just feel that the, uh, the defensive line is going to be pretty solid, you know? Oh, I – I like the front line. I'm looking at, you know, can DJ Dale be back healthier this year? I know he battled with a little bit of a knee injury up and down, but he should be, you know, back full go. I like TM Smith, the sophomore. He's a disruptor. I like Fedarian Mathis, LeBron Ray. Can he stay healthy? Hopefully he can. Uh, and I have the young guys here on this line when you talk Byron Young, Justin Aboigby, uh, guys like Jamaria Latham, uh, guys like uh, uh, Jamil Burrow, so much guys on the defensive front. You're rotating eight to ten deep, so I like this line right here. But we appreciate that call right there coming into the show about the defense. We take our next call. You're live on the show. What's going on? Live on the show, Carla. What's going on? We lost that caller right there. Continue to get your thoughts in, folks, to call in, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you, the Bama fans, 205-448-1358. But as we transition into a quick topic, and this goes to the Miami Dolphins, Dan Marino. It don't get no more Miami than Dan Marino. This is, this is the guy that played for the Dolphins at quarterback, starting quarterback from 1983 to 99, played 17 years in the league, a, a guy over a, 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 just a plethora of awards. But, you know, Marino right now has been an executive for the franchise since 2014. And he was interviewed by Cameron Wolf of ESPN and just talking about how excited he is for Tua Tungabangoa this year. He talked about, hey, man, Tua didn't have a lot of opportunities last year to grow in the offseason due to COVID and all the craziness that went on. But despite it all, he still played. He played quite a bit. Miami won games. He was 6-3 and three as a starter. He helped Miami get a 10-6 you know, record. But uh, Marino talked about how Tua having OTAs this time around, him having these practices, him having these camps, he just feels like this year Tua is going to make a big jump, a big leap, you know, get these guys in the playoffs. And uh, Marino was very hopeful that Tua can take these guys to a Super Bowl at some point. And that was probably the one thing Marino was not able to do is to get this franchise to the Super Bowl and win and hoist you know, the Vince Lombardi Trophy. So the coaching staff is around, is, is behind Tua. The teammates are behind Tua. And when you got Dan Marino, 
the biggest iconic figure. When you talk about this franchise, he's behind Tua. I'm really excited to see what Tonga Valoa does in his second year down there in South Florida. But we take a break right here, folks, on the show. Don't touch that dial. When we get back, we talk some recruiting with the best man in the business, our own Justin Smith. You'll hear from him after this. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now, you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. We're back in, folks, from the break. Number one form for Bama football news. In my own words, George truly Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Before we meet up with Justin here, we got to shout out Jimmy Cashman Class out of town. $20 donation in the Super Chats. The goal of $75 has been mad. Appreciate Jimmy Clay. Appreciate the man New Jack and everybody for donating in, super chatting in, showing your love where this show is concerned. Really appreciate you guys. But right now we go over to the In My Own Words Hotline. We pick up the hardest working man in the business, folks. I give it to him. He work harder than me. Hardest working man in the business in terms of this recruiting trail. Nobody does it. Like Justin Smith does it. Scouting and recruiting analyst for TDA. Justin, welcome me in, man. Hope you're well. No, I'm doing good, Steven. Doing fantastic, Justin. Happy to have you in here. Proud to have you in here. So it, it appears that Alabama going crazy here, you know, reaching out to the international players, but also getting in more punters. We, I mean, the Tide already brought in a transfer punter and Jack uh, and Jack Martin from Troy University, but now it has reached over and grabbed. It's reached over and grabbed James Burnip, James Burnip of six six, an Australian punter Burnip who was committed to Ole Miss, but has decided to flip to Alabama, joining the likes of Martin, Ty P. Ryan, Sam Johnson. Talk to me a little bit about burn up here, Australian punter 6'6". What, what does this do here for the Crimson Tide? And, and, did, and did, did it shock you to see this move happen? Yeah, it is a bit shocking considering that they just picked up Jack Martin. And when they got Martin, I kind of felt like it was going to be a big competition at Tuscaloosa for that punter, starting punter position next season. But not to add James Burnup, it is most definitely going to be a very heated competition at Tuscaloosa at the punter position. But looking at James Burnup committing to the Crimson Tide, it is interesting in a lot of ways. It's really interesting because Alabama has not had an, an Australian punter in the past. This is one of the first things that makes it very interesting. Another thing that makes it really interesting is the fact that Burnup has never played organized football. You never, you never really hear that happen, really. A guy who never played football at any level in terms of in, or in, or in an organized fashion, getting a scholarship from Alabama, not a walk-on player, but he has an opportunity to get a scholarship from Alabama. He is set to be on scholarship for four years. And that was the reason why he flipped his commitment to Alabama from Ole Miss. He posted that on Twitter that he flipped it from the Rebels to the Tide because Alabama was giving him an opportunity to be a four-year scholarship player. So this is very interesting. I'm pretty sure Alabama's coaching staff is very confident in him to extend an offer, not only extend an offer, but a scholarship offer. So the 6'6 um, punter from Australia could turn some heads this upcoming season. 
When you look at Drew Swoboda right now as the special teams coach, this punter room starting to look like the running back room, wide receiver room, linebacker room. A lot of punters right now. When you talk Jake, when you talk about Jack Martin, uh, Ty P. Ryan, Sam Johnson, and now you add the likes of James Burnup here, the Australian. But as we look at this here, as we look at this here, Justin, Alabama had a certain wide receiver camp out on last week from the 2023 class by the name of Nathaniel Joseph. And this young man turned some serious heads out there in the camp. And Coach Saban has even gone as far as to compare him to Jalen Waddle. We saw what Waddle did. We now see him in the NFL with the Miami Dolphins. That chemistry between he and Tua picking back up like it never left. Talk to me about Nathaniel Joseph. What stands out about his game to have Nick Saban go as far as to say this guy is on the same playing field as Jalen Waddell? I think it's the explosiveness, the explosiveness that he brings to the field. That is what made Jalen Waddle so exciting to watch. He was explosive after the catch. He was explosive for running his routes. He was explosive from going up and get the football at its highest point. The thing is, Joseph definitely brings that to the table. He has a similar frame at 5'10". I think he weighs uh, around 170 pounds. So he has a similar frame to the frame that Jalen Waddle had coming out of high school, coming out of Texas. But the thing, is, is a, the thing is, Joseph is a Florida product. Alabama has gone into Florida and pulled in a good number of wide receivers, including in that 2021 recruiting class where they landed four guys. So I think he is definitely going to be one of Alabama's top wide receiver targets in the 2023 recruiting class. He told me that he had a great time in Tuscaloosa. You guys can check out my interview with Nathaniel Joseph and learn a little bit more about the Florida product over at TouchdownAlabama.com. But Nick Saban did tell him that he reminded him of Jalen Water. And one of the things I have noticed uh, as far as Nick Saban making comparisons to former Alabama players, he rarely misses. He doesn't just throw that out there. He looks at that and he sees it and he makes a thorough analysis when making those comparisons. If you're just tuning into the show, ladies and gentlemen, here on a Monday, we got Justin Smith, the scouting and recruiting analyst for Touchdown Alabama on the on the Touchdown Alabama on magazine. Excuse me, on the line, got a little tongue tied right there. But Justin, as we look at now, Ty Simpson, the five-star quarterback, commit to Alabama for 2022, young man out of Tennessee. I remember you, you and I spoke about he and his family visited Alabama over the weekend. You got a chance to speak with his dad. Uh, Simpson's dad really enjoyed the visit. Ty Simpson enjoyed the visit. The entire family seemed to be even more so in love with the program and the process that is Coach Saban and the Tide. From your conversation with Simpson's dad, what stood out to what stood out the most to them about the visit? Well, what stood out the most is some of the things that you don't really know about, he said, everyone knows about the draft picks. Everyone knows about the wins and the championships. But it is some of the things that are done behind the scenes as far as the academic program and as far as Alabama's medical training and the strict conditioning staff is concerned as well. He said those things really stood out. But one of the things that stood out to me about our conversation is how brought in Ty Simpson is with the Alabama football program. I think Alabama fans will be very happy to hear that this five-star quarterback is really brought into the Alabama football as a program as well as the University of Alabama as a coacher. During that visit, they went, on, they went to dinner one night, and Nate Oates, Alabama's basketball coach, came in with a recruit. Ty Simpson went over, met the recruit, met Coach Oates, and just introduced himself and said hi. So you could tell that he is trying to be an ambassador for Alabama football as well as the University of Alabama as well. So I think he's really brought into the program. Justin, you and I both spoke on this also. So this this week is a big week for the Crimson Tide. A lot of visitors here coming on the campus. And one in particular, you got the you got the man of football royalty when you talk Arch Manning. 2023 quarterback. I mean, the guy, you know, grandfather's Archie Manning, you know, uncles Peyton and Eli Manning. He's the son of Cooper Manning. So when you throw the Manning name out there, people are just enamored with it. They're one of the first, they're the first, you know, royal football family, so to speak. So to have Arch visiting uh, this week, I believe he comes in on the 18th. How big is this? What does this mean? And, and also behind Manning, who are some other guys that will be visiting the University of Alabama this week as it is a big week? 
Um, it's a good good number of guys, of course. Arch Manning um, will headline these guys, the 2023 quarterback, who is the um, son of Cooper Manning, like you said. He's part of that Manning family, plays quarterback. Alabama will get him on campus. He has been on a couple of different campuses lately trying to get a feel of what he possibly wants to go to school in the future. He visited Texas. Um, last weekend, I believe, and weekend before that, he took a trip to Clemson, and now it's Alabama turn, Alabama's turn to see what they can um, show the rising um, 2023 prospect. I'm pretty sure he will count in Tuscaloosa as well, so he will get an opportunity to show Alabama's coaching staff what he can do. He'll be joined by a long list of interesting guys who will be on campus as well, including a good group of official visitors, talking about five-star defensive end, Ene White. You also have Isaiah Bund, a cornerback out of Georgia, out of Bruford High School. Alabama really seems to like. You have Isaiah Horton, a four-star wide receiver out of Tennessee. So Alabama will be loaded with a lot of unofficial visitors as well as official visitors. It was a bit slow this past weekend, but things are set to pick up this week. He's Justin Smith, folks, the scouting and recruiting analyst for Touchdown Alabama Magazine coming on here to give us the lowdown of what's going on in recruiting, including a big week this week. Crimson Tide will be hosting a lot of visitors, including the man of football royalty, Arch Manning, 2023 quarterback. I don't think Arch Manning will come to the Crimson Tide, but hey, you can dream. You can dream, you can dream, but always good to have Justin on the show. Justin, take care of yourself, man. Be good, man. Take care. You do the same, Steven. Always a joy and a fun time getting a chance to talk recruiting with our own Justin Smith. Once again, hardest working man in the business. That man is the definition of team no sleep. Talk about our own Justin Smith here. We go to a break right now, folks. Don't touch that dab. We get back. We entertain you. 205-448-1358. That's the number to call in. 205-448-1358. Ring that number right now because when we get back, we're taking your calls right now for this don't touch that dial call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on in my own words with stephen m smith brought to you by we own the fourth quarter visit we own the fourth quarter.com now to get your four finger bling necklace you know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter we throw them foes up but now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter get your four finger bling necklace at we own the fourth quarter.com it's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all crimson tide players and fans as we represent the legendary alabama football fourth quarter dominance get your four finger bling necklace right now at we own the fourth quarter.com get yours today and stun on them haters Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. And people, we are back in. We are back into the action from the break of number one ticket. Number one form for Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine on a Monday, getting that work week started off for you correctly. And before we hop back in the phone lines to take your calls, got to shout out Bama Box. Bama Box, two step in the building. John Ivory hit that horn, that $7 donation coming in from Bama Box. He dropped in $5. When he came back and dropped in two more bucks for a total of seven. Appreciate that love. They're coming from Bama Box, helping us out here on the show. Call statement, though, brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. That's the number to call in to let your voice be heard, 205-448-1358. Got to show some more love to Bama Box. He can drop two more in here. That's nine dollars coming in from Bama Box. He, he he's getting warmed up. He's getting warmed up here on the show. But appreciate the love from all of you helping us out here 
on the channel. But before we, as you guys are getting your thoughts in the call in, once again, 205 448 1358. That's the number right there to call in. Gonna go to a quick topic right here, and it's how about Mac Jones right now, people? Mac Jones is killing it in OTAs. Killing it in OTAs for the Patriots. There was a rainy day. At, it was a rainy day at, at practice today for for the team. And uh, you no know, Mac Jones out there in the rain, having more command of the ball than all the other quarterbacks out there. Cam Newton, everybody else having some trouble in the rain, ball sailing on them, receivers dropping passes, just a lot of frustration, not for Mac Jones. Mac putting the ball on the money, having the torque on the ball, having the command on the ball, running the offense, guys not dropping passes. That's the reason why Mac Jones had those 10-inch hands Going back to the Senior Bowl, when you got that, you got those 10-inch mitts, you can grip that ball and sleet and rain and snow and wind and any type of terrain. When you got those 10-inch hands, you can command that ball and it will cut through all types of weather, climate, condition, things of that nature, according to the beat reporters there in New England. I think Mac went 14 for 20 today. I mean, the only times that he had some misfires there, he had maybe one or two passes that were dropped, but for the most part, 14 for 20, had full command, had full torque, had full uh, movement there of the offense. And this is really good because he's continuing to keep that pressure on Cam Newton. Now, of course, Bill Belichick mentioned Cam and Steele, you know, their guy, you know, being starting quarterback. But to see Mac keep that pressure on him, to see Mac continue putting that heat to him, this is big right here. But we take a call right now. You're live on the show. What's going on? What's going on, Steven? This your boy Scooby Lou from the end of that third war, that man. No, yeah, that home of the soldier. How was your uh your oh it's early this weekend, I'm sorry. How was your your past? I ain't called in a long time. I know, Scoob. Scoob, we miss you, man. Scoob, how you feeling, man? How, how you feeling, Scoob? I'm living like there, Ward. Hey, I just want to call in. I know I ain't called in a long time. Just want to show some love to you. Uh, Steven, I know I, I just want to make sure you're doing all right. I'm doing good. Everything, everything. I, I, pre appreciate the call, Scoob. Appreciate the call, man. I'm doing well. We doing well. We doing even better knowing that Scoob didn't call it. Appreciate Scooby there helping us out here on the show with that call. We got Bama Box another time with a fight. Bama Box, I'm talking, Bama Box is getting warmed up now. Bama Box is getting warmed up. Another $5 donation coming from Bama Box as uh, John Ivory hitting the horn there. But, but like I mentioned, happy about this for Mac Jones. I really am. I know. New England drafted him first round, number 15 overall. I know he, he's p competing against Cam Newton, but to see Mac make this push, to see Mac have that competitive fire, bringing that from Alabama to the NFL, and to see him have these strong throws in rainy, ugly weather, this is a positive sign because there are going to be days in pro ball you're not going to have the sun in Gillette Stadium. There's going to be some rain. There's going to be some sleet. There's going to be some snow. There's going to be some wind. So if Mac is already getting the gist of commanding, controlling that ball in rough weather, this is a good sign for Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels, and the Patriots. But we take another break right here, folks, on the show. But upon our return, we're going to talk about this right here. Will Anderson had a monster season last year, but who's the next young outside linebacker ready to explode? We'll talk about that after this. avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. 
Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. As we are back in from the break, I'm the number one form for Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And just looking at the chat there before coming back from the break, you know, we're on waiting and talking about the NBA playoffs. NBA playoffs going good. A, a lot of just awesome sports happening, you know, right now uh, in the NBA and, and also with, uh, with Major League Baseball. But before we get into the final topic of conversation right here, Got to remind you of TDAware.com. That is TDAware.com. So for all of you Todd fans still overjoyed with Alabama's national championship, we want you to check out our championship collection merch. This means you grab you an 18 of them things, folk hoodie, T-shirt, or sweatshirt, as well as our Got 18 We Do shirts. Designs that feature all 18 championship years on the back. You head on over to TDAware.com. Do it right now. TDAware.com. You click on the Championship Collections Merch tab, and you get you that gear, those shirts, all of that today. Show them that support for Coach Saban, the University of Alabama, the student athletes, and us here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But we get into the outside linebacker room for Alabama, and a room where if you are Sal Sanceri, you are tickled pink. I, I don't know what you're doing right now because of all the mass of talent you have in this one room. Now, last season, even with COVID happening, not having a spring, not having a normal summer, not having a normal fall camp, not even having a normal season, Will Anderson is just not your average linebacker. This dude picked up things quick, quick, fast, Seamless, smooth. I mean, it just picked things up. Will Anderson was just ready, ready. And he was so ready, ready that the young man ended up being freshman All-SEC, freshman All-American of the Sean Alexander National Freshman of the Year from the Football Writers Association of America. Will Anderson did it all last year. 52 tackles, 10 and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks. We know, we know the numbers that the young man put up. He, he was the real deal. The real big deal that was Anderson. But, you know, with, with all that he did, and uh, we expect for him to do even more in the coming season, and, and I expect for him to break some records and, and to have some school records before, the, before his career is said and done at the Crimson Tide. The question that U.S. fans want to know, Anderson was amazing. But who's the next young outside linebacker ready to pop? Who's the next young pass rusher? Who's the next young edge rusher at that position ready to explode and do damage here for the Crimson Tide? Because they got a lot of them on the roster. Sal Sanceri has a lot of guys on the roster that he can pick from. He can choose from. Now, you know, I did a poll for Touchdown Alabama Magazine on YouTube, kind of kind of kind of uh, pulsing you, the Bama fans, on you know, who's the guy that who's the next young outside linebacker you're ready to see, you know, do their thing. And who who controlled the majority of the vote was Drew Sanders. I mean, you guys are ready to see Drew Sanders. And, and what's interesting here is Sanders, Anderson, and Chris Braswell, they all were five stars in the 2020 class, according to the Touchdown Alabama Magazine independent recruiting rankings done by our, our own Justin Smith. Now, all three were five stars, but Drew Sanders and Chris Braswell started off with Drew. Sanders was different because not only was he a five star, Justin saw enough in him 
to give him a diamond grade also, a diamond grade of one. And what's intriguing about that is, once you tap into the diamond part of TDA, that means you're just not the average five star. There's something really special, something really unique, something really big about you. You get that diamond of one, you are a, you're projected to be an immediate contributor and a game changer. You get that diamond gray of two, then you, you, you're looked at to be a, uh, you know, an all, an all conference player, an all American player. You get that diamond gray of three, you're a once in a lifetime generational talent, and you're a top 15 draft pick. So that's how we kind of do it here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine. That's how you know, Justin you know, goes through the grading system there. So Drew Sanders was not only a five-star from us, he also got that diamond grade of one, which means immediate contributor and game changer. Now, unfortunately, with COVID, you know, he didn't quite have the opportunity to get to, he didn't quite have the chance to kind of learn everything as fast as Will Anderson did. Everybody grows and goes at their own pace. But when you look at Sanders, freakish athlete. Freakish, freakish athleticism. A guy that's got the strength, he's got the size at 6'5", he's got big speed, he's got big versatility. In high school, this brother was a linebacker, a quarterback, and a tight end coming out of Texas. The guy could do it all. Just an all-around, big-time utility player. And uh, to, to, to see the potential that he has, Big, major potential. He had a full spring this time with an A-Day game. He's going to have full summer, full fall camp. If Chris Allen would have went pro after this past season, we would be talking about Drew Sanders as a starter on the field. But since Chris Allen decided to come back, no offense to my boy Chris Allen, I love my boy Chris Allen. But since Chris Allen has come back, now you're looking at no, Drew Sanders being that next guy on on the uh, on the horizon to pop right here. But Drew Sanders is one, a guy that people are very excited to see get it done. Behind him is Chris Braswell. Braswell, you know, you know, Kent was another another guy that had the diamond grade of one from our own Justin Smith, which means immediate contributor or or, or big time game changer. And uh, he didn't see the field at all, you know, last season. Not once again, dealing with COVID, not having not having a spring, not having the natural summer of a natural fall camp. But this spring, uh, Braswell turned it up. This spring, Braswell came with it. This spring, Braswell was talking that talk and doing what to do. In, in the A-Day game, we're talking about five tackles, three sacks, three tackles for loss, and a forced fumble. And uh, I spoke with Coach Saban after the game. And he said that this is a young man that we have to, and we being Alabama football, we have to find a role for him. His edge rushing ability is going to be needed for us on the field. So what Braswell did in the spring, it really elevated his profile in the eyes of Coach Saban and the entire staff. They've got to put him on the field. They've got to have him on the field. He's got to be on the field because – He's got the speed, uh, the swim move, the rush move. The, he, he's got the ability to stunt and, 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 and reverse and all the pass rush moves right there. He, he's got that type of ability. Was able to frustrate Bryce Young in the spring game. Got some sacks against Bryce Young when they were in high school. Of course, uh, Braswell was at St. Francis Academy at, uh, in Maryland. Bryce Young, the, modern, the prestigious modern-day high school in California, so both of the two familiar with each other, but you know, Braswell did his thing in the A-Day game, looking forward to seeing you know, what he does. And behind him, you look at King Wakuda. Now, King is long, he's rangy, he's athletic, he's got some years in the system, going into now his third year in the program, so he knows what to expect in playing that outside linebacker position. The thing with King is, uh, can he beat out some of the names that U.S. fans want to see more of? Can he beat out a Chris Braswell? Can he beat out a Drew Sanders? That's the big thing with King. He's got the experience. He's got the name to be a big-time pass rusher. He's got the length. He's got you know the, the size, the ability, the speed. 
but can he beat out a Chris Braswell or a Drew Sanders? going to be a tough challenge for him to do. But behind King, you've got Quandarius Robinson. And Q Robinson getting a chance to talk to my man Leonard Stevens, step-by-step -step performance trainer here in Birmingham. He has spent a lot of time working with big Q Robinson. And, uh, you know, once Q feels out his full body, he's going to be a, uh, he's going to be a Courtney Upshaw type. And that's something scary right there. And I kind of want to see that. You know, him filling out the whole frame and him looking like a Courtney Upshaw on the field, attacking quarterbacks, stuffing ball carriers, forcing fumbles, creating plays. Kind of definitely want to see that. And that was another, you know, five-star from the 2020 class, according to our own Justin Smith. So I really want to see what, what Q Robinson can do, but at the same time, He's behind, you know, of a guys. Can he push through? Can he break through? Can he break out? Because the potential for him is right there. And then behind him, you got Dallas Turner, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And Dallas Turner, he said, after watching Will Anderson come in here and dominate as a freshman, that was all the motivation he needed. He's like, okay. If Will Anderson can do it, make room for me. I'm coming. Because if he did it, I'm going to be able to do the same thing. And uh, he's got size. He's got speed. He's got burst. He's got explosiveness. He's got moves. He, he, he's got it. He's got a package that you put him uh, on the field, he has a chance to somehow crack this rotation. going to be very, very interesting. And then you got other guys like, uh, Keanu Coat in here, among others. This outside linebacker room under Sal Sunset, it's, it's, it is thicker than oatmeal. It is thicker than a, than a snicker. It, 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 is, it is thick. This is a thick outside linebacker room for Alabama. And uh, Sal Sunset has talent stacked from top to bottom. But after Will Anderson, the biggest question U.S. fans have is, Who's the next young, hungry, outside linebacker ready to emerge, step up, and mean business? And for you out there, you guys have your eyes on Drew Sanders. I have my eyes on Drew Sanders. But Chris Braswell's real good. Uh, King Wakuda's got some things to bring to the table. Quandarius Robinson's got talent. And Dallas Turner said, look, y'all, if Will Anderson can come in here and raise some heck and do some stuff, I got that same type of ability to raise some heck and do some stuff. It's going to be fun to see how this outside backer room shapes up here because when you have those pass rushers on the edge that can also walk down as an extra defensive lineman and come after the quarterback and stuff the run and shrink the amount of time the opposing offense has on the field, that's a big deal. It's a big deal for the Crimson Tide. And that's what Coach Saban wants to see in this upcoming season. But, folks, as always, you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage here on your favorite program. You can get this by downloading or accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You can download the app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store, if you got the Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we got you right here, iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play, Overcast.fm, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, got you covered right there. The good and gracious Lord sees fit. I'll be back on Wednesday continuing the coverage that is Tied Football. For all of you Bama fans out there, be reminded you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be found in the description. If you're also trying to copy you, that new edition, fresh edition, print edition of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, you can do that by going to touchdownalabama.com. You click join, become a member, a subscriber today. If you're also trying to get your hands on that four-finger bling necklace, four-finger bling jewelry, courtesy of our guys at We 
on the fourth quarter.com. That link in the description as well. But until next time, folks, husbands love your wives. Wives appreciate value. Those husbands, children continue doing the fun thing, the right thing, the smart thing, the legitimate thing to not be bored. You get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great naps a day. Protect yourself. Protect the loved ones around you. Until next time, folks, spit in my own words.